Yo, what's good? It's Mastermind MMA. And uh, I was just watching uh, the MMA Hour with Ariel Helwani, and uh, it, it seemed pretty dry a lot. Uh, I, they had Tony Ferguson on. He was talking. That was pretty cool. But uh, this video is going to be talking about Holly Holm. And uh, she she got on, and Ariel asked her, hey, how do you feel about you not getting that rematch? How did you find out? And she was like, well, um, like she was very holly about it, but like, you know, like, like very decent and, you know, not really putting blame on anyone or really being expressive, but she was a lot more expressive than she usually is. And, um, I I just got to preface this by saying I give her a lot of credit because, you know, she's kind of, she re she really is the same in victory or defeat. You know, she she when she won the belt, she wasn't talking shit. She had the she really had the opportunity to be like, Rhonda, you called me a fake ass bitch. I kicked your fake ass head off and she could have went back in. She took the high road. Um, it was unfortunate, depending on what perspective you have, what happened to her with Misha. And, uh, you know, she got on and she was talking about. She was like, yeah, so uh, they didn't they didn't tell me anything. And uh, they said that, uh, you know, uh, they offered me the rematch and then uh, they gave it. To, no, no, she didn't say they offered her the rematch. She said she wasn't sure if they offered Misha the rematch and like they weren't hearing anything. And personally, uh, I did a video where it's uh, about talking about Holly's manager in that situation. But Holly Holm said personally she never got any heads up about it. And she kind of found out like everyone else. And uh, she was saying she even even went to the lengths of asking for Kat Zingano or Juliana Pena. And she confirmed that the cyborg fight was out there. It was offered to her. And the reason she gave for uh, turning down the cyborg fight was that she was still hoping to get that Misha rematch. And then uh, Ariel asked her, so now do you do you feel bad for not taking that? And she was like, eh, maybe. I don't know. Probably not. I don't know. And uh, you could see a very she was very open with like. Dude, they're keeping me out of the fucking loop. The UFC is keeping Holly Holm out of the loop. It's very ironic. Uh, Not ironic, but in in juxtaposition of how they're treating Connor as to how they're treating Holly. They both lost. And they're, they're trying to treat Holly. From what Holly was vocal about, she was like, it's basically a trainer like you fucked up and you lost everything. Like how how Dana was talking on the post fight fight interview uh right after 196, that's kind of what the the situation's been. They've been really treating her like uh you fucked up. We told you not to take this fight, you took it, you fucked up, deal with it. You made your bed lay in it. And uh she was saying, uh, and Ariel ran through like the rankings, and he was like Misha, uh, Amanda Nunes, Kat Zingano, Juliana Pena, uh, Jessica I. All these people are booked, and he's like, how how does it end up with Holly Holm being the odd one out? And it 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 definitely seems like politics, man. It, it's because Dana doesn't like the manager, manager doesn't like Dana, and Holly Holm has to pay that price. Maybe maybe if Holly Holm was a different personality, she could come about it differently. But she's not the type of person to take on Dana White or the UFC brass head on just out of pure decency out of, and respect. Because, you know, you know, when you go to war with Dana, all his shots are below the belt. You know, uh, so I, I think she's just kind of waiting around and Ariel even brought up a point he was like so do you think they're just trying to get all of this out of the way so when Ronda comes back you and Ronda have the fight regardless of any belts or anything just so that rematch is safe that's what Ariel asked Holly and when Ariel asked her that her reaction was that 
of of someone you know when you present a, a new school of thought to somebody or like a new perception and they're like oh shit i never thought about it that way that's like that that was like her reaction to it like oh maybe maybe you know i don't I, they haven't said anything to me about it but maybe maybe that's what they're saving it for and Ariel Helwani asked her, uh, would you rather have Misha or Holly? I mean, uh, Misha or the Ronda rematch. And she said the Misha rematch, obviously, to avenge a loss. So, yeah, she said she I, I feel bad for Holly, to be quite honest with you. I feel like that that uh, half a million disclosed pay was almost like a severance severance package for her if she lost and which she did uh i'm not saying this is me speaking from this moment and from what i heard from holly so obviously the ufc could be playing in a bunch of shit but obviously probably not if the fighter doesn't even know how you're gonna plan something without the fighter you know so if holly home is out of the loop and you could tell by her tone and like Dude, she's crushed. Holly is crushed. And it's not even like a crushed like from losing. It's like like she lost and they're treating it like it wasn't just a loss in the fight. They're like, you you fucked your career up. The the way the UFC was presenting it, it was like you had one trajectory for the career, and that was to wait for Rhonda and then go from there. I'm pretty sure if, if Holly finished Ronda again then they would have put all their push behind Holly but I think because they put all their push beside uh uh they sorry my bad my dog just walked in so that threw me off but uh so the they're treating her like she just because she decided to take her route or her career a different route instead of just waiting out for Rhonda and then and then kind of doing her thing because I think that's what they're waiting for they're like listen just let's do this rematch let's make this money and then you're good and I think she was like well no like uh I'm a pretty big star now I could do it not in the sense of a dude I'm sure I'm sure once you kick fucking the reigning champion's head off you definitely have to have some sort of ego so I'm sure she knew she didn't she she was she knew about Misha she knew Misha Tate was a dangerous fighter but We all knew there was a chance of an upset, but that's really a a chance of an upset with every fight. So I really don't know too many people that were calling Misha to win that fight. So the fact that Misha won, Holly lost, and now the UFC is just not really telling her anything. They're giving her Cyborg offers. Who the fuck wants to fight Cyborg? Like, that would be a good fight, but if you... If you just lost your belt, I I don't think like catch weight fights are the next thing up on your plate. You're you're gonna want to get that belt back. Maybe if you got that belt and pull a Conor McGregor and just put that bitch in the locker and go fight, then yeah. But not right after you lose, cause what? If, and there's a high chance she could lose to Cyborg. Cyborg is a very seasoned beast. But I've never watched any of her fights. This is from what I heard. I, I don't know why. I just never. I never did. Uh, but she could. That's a, that's a fight that she has a greater chance of losing. So why would she put herself in a shittier position for no gain? Really, there, there's no rankings. There's not even a division there. It's just one fight. And maybe they're like, yo, like kind of since you know being snarky like since you want to be a fighter here's a fight kind of offer because bro the way dana was talking that shit was vindictive so i feel bad for holly i i hope they're just holding out for the ronda fight but if they're trying to like fuck with her man that that's messed up and uh tony ferguson called in said talked about his injury that got him out against khabib Khabib Nagurman Nab- 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 
Khabib Nagurgamanidov. Khabib Nagurgamanidov. I can't even say his name. But uh, he was explaining how he told... Uh, he was just training. It was no overtraining. He did the same camp, did the same shit, and uh, basically he, some something slipped off a pad or something hit him, and then like apparently he he got something wrong with his lungs. You know, at first they thought it was a collapsed lungs. And then I think it was like a ruptured lung or something like that. I don't even remember right now. But, yeah, he said that's why he said he would be back in like four to five weeks. That's why he asked Khabib to just wait till the May 24th fight. And Khabib said no. Khabib was on the MMA hour. And he before Tony and he was talking about, yeah, um, you you know, I, I, I wanted to fight. I, I told UFC that I wanted Ferguson, and if I didn't get Ferguson, you know, I want top guy, I want uh, Donald Cowboy Soroni, but uh, we signed contract, and I sent him picture of contract, he didn't send anything back, so, you know, this guy, he, he making his debut, uh, I'm, I, I'm not looking uh, past anybody, you know, so, yeah, I'm just focused on my fate. And not Tony Ferguson. And no, that wasn't an exact Khabib quote. That was me, bitches. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just playing. But no, that was really me. But I know it probably wasn't that good. But he he basically said he just wanted to fight. He wanted to get back in. And he, he it, it was against anybody. He really didn't give a fuck. And Ariel asked him, well, if you come out of this clean... Maybe Khabib Ferguson at the date you guys on the May 24th. And he's like, oh, I, I don't want to think about Ferguson. I have fight on 16th April. So Ariel's like, oh, I could respect that. And uh, Tony Ferguson said, fuck that. If this shit doesn't work out, it got brought up. And he's like, yo, I want that title shot, man. I'll knock RDA out. I'll knock the champ out. And he said the Khabib fight was at 170, I think, or supposed to be, or he was at 170. I might have missed that part. I actually forget that. He might have said he was at 170 getting ready to cut down. So scratch, scrickety, scrickety, scratch that part out. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. I feel bad for Holly, man. Like, what do you guys think? That's like, dude, you should you should definitely listen to that that part of the interview, the Holly part. Because, I mean, my description of it doesn't do it justice, but, like, when you hear her and her exact tone and her exact, like, you could very visibly see her, like, very, like, filtering herself and, you know, but still being more expressive because, you know, they kind of burned her. But then she doesn't want to say too much because she doesn't know. But then she kind of knows because they're not even talking to her. She said, she said, like, when I when I when they weren't getting back to my managers, I kind of knew we didn't get the rematch. So she kind of know she knows more than you and us. You and us. That makes sense. Uh, She knows more than all of us that. We like whatever is going on between Dana and her manager. She knows the intricacies of that, even like whatever gossip her manager says. So she she it sounds like she knows what they're doing and it sounds like they're axing her out and they might get her for the Ronda fight and whatever happens, happens. But it it sounds like they're just kind of like, well, fuck you. You're not that big of a draw anyway. Like, you're a one-hit wonder. I feel like they're really trying to just treat her as like, well, you're the chick that beat Ronda. And they, uh, he, he, they even said, like, with, uh, the manager, Holly said she was talking to him. And, uh, she never, she never said anything about, like, the manager release statement, she never, like, spoke on that. But she was, she was saying that, you know, she... Put, she reached out for the rematch. Nothing. She offered Cat and Juliana. She offered to fight Cat Zingano or Juliana Pena, and then they set them up, like to fight each other. 
I mean, you should listen to it. Like, her tone plays a lot into it. So, uh, yeah, guys, you already know it's Mastermind MMA.